There may be a time that you need to make an announcement to all users of your application and you want that message to appear at the top of every page. For example, perhaps you have some scheduled maintenance coming up and you'd like to share that with the user so no matter which page they're on, they see that maintenance message. And once the user reads that message, they should be able to hide it so it no longer shows up no matter which page they go on or if they come back to the app. So that's what I'll be building in this episode, and since it is a fairly simple addition, I think I'll have time here to build it test first. Now I already have the testing environment set up for this app. I'm using RSpec and Capybara as I show in episode 275, and I'm also using Poltergeist with PhantomJS to run the JavaScript, which I demonstrated in episode 391. Well, let's get started adding this functionality. I usually always start with a request spec and we can make one using the integration test generator. Let's call it announcement. And here's that request spec which was generated. I'll clear most of this out and let's just say it displays active announcements. So the first thing I want to do is create an announcement. Now I want this to be stored in the database, so I'm going to make a model called announcement, which I can create, and I, ha I don't have this model yet, but I'll make it later. And let's give it a message of what we want to display to the user. I'll say hello world. And I also want to have a start and end time attributes on this model so we can automatically hide it. So it starts at, uh, let's say one hour ago, and ends at, we'll say one hour from now. So with that record, when I visit the uh, root path, then the page should have the content of hello world. Let's see if this works. Not surprisingly, when we run our specs, they fail because we have yet to create an announcement model. So let me generate a new model here called announcement and give it a message, which will be a text type. And the starts at is a date time and the ends at is also a date time. And then I'll migrate the database to create the table. And this time when we run our specs, they should fail again because we don't have the content displayed on the page. And yep, we don't have the content, hello world, so we need to add our announcement to the page. I'm going to do this in the application layout file so it shows up on every page. I'll just loop through all the announcements for now, and that way we can uh, refine it later with more tests. And I want to display a div for each one, so I'll use div4 for convenience. And then I just want to display the announcement message inside of here. There we go. And now our test is passing. Yay! Now what about announcements that we don't want displayed because they aren't within the current starting and ending time? Well, let me make one here. Let's call it upcoming. And let's say it uh, should start 10 minutes from now. And so that should not appear on the page. So the page should not have the content upcoming. And that fails because we're currently looping through all the announcements. Now I could add some where conditions on this call on the view layer, but I usually like to jump straight into moving this to the model. So let's make a scope called current on the announcement class. Now before I go implementing something directly on the model, I like to add some lower level tests. So I'll do that inside of this announcement spec file, which is currently empty. I'm just going to paste this in to speed things up. This will create three announcements, one uh, before and after and falls within the current time. So only the one that falls within the current time should be uh, appearing in that scope. Also notice I have this focus tag on here. I like to do this when I have some higher level tests that are failing so I can focus on getting these lower level ones passing first. And uh, this focus uh, setting is configured in the spec helper file right here so it will only run that focus tag first. So when I run that spec, it unsurprisingly fails because I don't have the current scope. That's easy enough to add. Going into that announcement model, I'll add a scope called current, and I'll use the 1.9 lambda syntax to add a where condition into here, saying that the starts at must be less than or equal to, uh, let's say, a now time, and the ends at is greater than or equal to now. And so I'll need to pass in that now option, which will be time zone now. And now we're in the green for that one test. Since this is now passing, I can remove this focus tag so it will run them all. And our high level test is passing as well. Oh good. Next, I want the user to be able to hide an announcement and I'm going to build upon this existing spec. Uh, you might want to make a separate one, but this allows it to have a little bit of performance and it kind of ties together anyway. So I'm going to click on a hide announcement link 
And then I should not have the text hello world on there because it should be hidden. Unsurprisingly, this fails since we don't have a link hide announcement. So after displaying the announcement message in the layout file, let's add a link to say hide announcement and that should go, we don't really have an action set up for this yet, but let's make one called hide announcement path and pass the announcement record to it. Next, we'll need to modify our routes file to support this link. I'm going to make a custom matcher here, but you might want to make a full resource if you have other actions. So I'll make this called announcements uh, slash ID slash hide. And that will go to, let's make an announcements controller with a hide action. And let's make this a named route called hide announcement. There we go. So we'll need to generate that controller called announcements. And in here we need to define that hide action. And how should this work though? Well, we need to remember which announcements the user has marked as hidden, which we could do maybe in a session, but that isn't very persistent. The user closes the window, comes back, and then the announcement will be there again since the session reset. Instead, I'm going to store it in a permanent cookie. And that way it'll stick around for quite some time. And I want to store an array of IDs inside of this cookie. And to have the serialization automatically happen for us, we can make this a signed cookie. So that way we can store an array inside of here very much like we can inside of a session. Let's call this hidden announcement IDs. So I want to set this to an array of IDs and that should include the ID parameter passed in as well as any IDs existing already in the cookie. So I can call cookies.signed, uh, then the hidden announcement IDs in there and let's use the splat operator so it automatically expands that out. And if there aren't any IDs in here, that's fine. The splat will take care of it for us. And I'll redirect to back. So it goes back to the, exist the page they were currently on. So running our tests at this point, we do get a failure, but it's what we expect. A hello world shouldn't appear on the page, but it does because it's not skipping that hidden announcement. I'll need to change the application layout file because at the moment we're just fetching the current announcements by the time. I'll need to pass in the announcements that I want to skip in here as well. I'm just going to make them as an argument on this current scope, but you might want to make this a separate method or maybe move this logic into a helper method or something to clean up the view a little. Now, before I change this implementation on the model, I want to uh, add a test for it. So I'm going to paste this in for the sake of time. It's actually two tests here. One to make sure that the uh, current uh, one being passed in here is not included in the output. And also if uh, no ID is passed in, that it does include the current records. And inside of the announcement model, I'll paste in the implementation here as well. Uh, this is actually going to be a class method instead of an actual scope. And this will just do the same current and date time find and also exclude any IDs passed in here if there are any present. So with that change, all of our tests are now passing and I consider this feature pretty much complete. So let's try this out in the browser. But first I'll need to create an announcement record, which I'll do through the console. You'll probably wanna create some kind of administration interface for this. I'll just paste this in to create a new announcement record and let's try this out. Now reloading this page in the browser uh, shows us the announcement at the top, but it's not very pretty, so let's add some styling. I'll just paste some CSS into here to make it look nicer. And reload the page. There we go, much better. So whatever page we visit, it shows our announcement and clicking on hide announcement, hides it there. But notice that it did actually refresh the page because it's doing an actual redirect. Instead, it would be nice if we hid the announcement using JavaScript. I want to add a test for this functionality as well. So in my request spec, I'm going to duplicate the spec we wrote earlier, and let's have it run JS for this. So that will end up using Phantom JS with Poltergeist, which I already have set up in this application. And I'll clean this up a little bit to handle the edge cases I don't care about for the JS version. Hmm, so when we run our specs, they already pass because this functionality is already implemented. It's just that it doesn't rely on JavaScript, but we want our application to degrade gracefully. So how do we test to ensure that the JavaScript is being used and working properly, we want to start with a failing test. So going back to our spec, uh, let me first change this description so that it's a little more clear. I want that it stays on a page when hiding announcement with JavaScript. 
So the way this should work is when I click on the hide announcement page, it should activate the JavaScript and stay on that same page. And we can accomplish this by uh, something like this, saying expect it to not change the page response headers. So let's try this out. This time we get a failure because the page's response headers do change since we are actually visiting a new page and not staying on the same one with JavaScript. We have a failing test, so let's get it passing. I'll do this really quickly here, changing this hide announcement link, passing the remote option as true so it uses Ajax. And then in the announcements hide action, let's change this redirect back so it only happens on an HTML request and the JavaScript request will use a view. Let's call it hide.js.erb. So in here, we need to remove the clicked on element, which we can do by grabbing the announcement ID and let's pass in the params ID into here and just click remove on that. And voila, our JavaScript test is now passing. And if we try it in the browser, clicking hide announcement works. It just hides it with using JavaScript and it can fall back gracefully uh, if JavaScript isn't enabled. And that finishes up this episode on adding a site-wide announcement. Thanks for watching.